Hello, my loves. Okay, I'm going to start today's broadcast with a question that I ask my husband just about every day, which is, do you know how much I love you? Now, <laughs> the answer is always so, so much. And the reason why I ask him this is because I know how much on a daily basis I just really wrap my life around him. I'm busy every day, ghostwriting books for other coaches, coaching my own clients. Hello, Sushil, nice to see you. Um, and on top of that, I dedicate myself to making sure my husband has everything he needs, all the food he needs. I feed him three times a day. He's like my, my little pet. I love, love, love him. And today I'm saying this to you because I am sick AF. I may or may not cough, clear my throat, and or blow my nose today <laughs> because... And I might pass out, who knows? But if I do, don't worry. Uh, I'm actually just off my husband's office and he'll find me eventually when he gets hungry. Hi, you guys, Raven, Jules. Hello, hello, hello. So good to see you guys. Hi, so wonderful to see you. Uh, as always, any questions, let me know. Anything confusing you, let me know. Let me help you clarify whatever is on your mind. Love your hearts, love your love. Uh, and of course, I bring you a topic. I love that you guys are showing up lickety split today. I'm pretty sure you're happy to hear what I'm going to talk about. Um, but feel free to interrupt me at any time because I am here for you first and foremost. Okay. So with that in mind, what I brought to you today is the topic why you are getting ghosted online. When you're online dating and you reach out to people, you make a connection, you send them a message, they send you one back, you reply back to them, and then they go silent. Why are they doing that? Why are they ghosting? <clears throat> there we go, <laughs> there it is. Why are they ghosting you? So, Jules, hello. Uh, you're looking energetic. I know. I don't know what it is, guys. Um, I am like, I'm happy to come here. Like, seriously, like I've been dizzy today, but forget it. I'm doing the hair. I'm doing the makeup. I'm putting on. Do you see the sparkly sweatshirt I got on today? Love, love, love it. Um, and it's just as soon as I get in front of you, it's like something turns on. There's this light inside of me, and I love seeing you here. I love seeing you show up. Love seeing you engage, love getting your questions, love giving you clarity. I just, I love this whole process. Uh, so why are you getting ghosted online? And this, again, like, I always bring you the hot topic of the week. Like what is happening? What's kind of coming at me very much with coaching clients or with people who are messaging me online. And so it's like really fresh in my mind. And I, and I love just bringing this to you. Uh, wonderful topic that you've chosen. Yeah, this is a big one and I see it happen a lot, which is why I wanted to talk to you about this today because I don't want you to get ghosted. And by the way, if you do get ghosted, come see me because I can give you the script that's going to open that door again. What happens is we miss the mark when it comes to communicating with people. We tend to sort of take our own mindsets and just dump it on the table in front of them, but we're not taking into account what's on their mind. We're not taking into account what their needs are. And there's one rule that I really stress over and over again when it comes to communicating with people online, because online is tricky, right? Like it's one thing to catch somebody's attention. It's another thing entirely to reel them in. And the rule is, keep this in mind guys, give before you take. What I see happen over and over again <clears throat> is you're gonna see somebody online that you're interested in, you're gonna send them a message, they're gonna send you something back, and then you barrage them with questions. It, and I mean, it might not be a lot of questions, you might just ask one question. And, and you're thinking, you know, I just, I wanna get this person to start talking to me. I want them to feel like there's an open dialogue. I want them to think that I'm interested in who they are. But the fact is, if you come across with a question too fast without giving first, if you're a male that's doing this especially, you need to take into account the fact that women online are just hit over and over and over again by males who are looking for attention. 
And nine times out of 10, the males that are online are looking for somebody to have sex with rather than somebody to have a relationship with. And so women who are online looking for a relationship, they're coming face to face with guys who are like, hey, are you the one that is going to be easy to get in contact with? Are you the one that's gonna be easy to reel in? Are you the one who's gonna give what I want without really getting what you want in return? And women are getting really tired of this. Like they're on to the games. They're on to the guys who are just, you know, throwing out the line over and over again, just looking for somebody not looking for anyone specific because it's not about a relationship. It's just about hooking up. So women are kind of getting frustrated at this. And if they connect with somebody and they open the dialogue and then immediately what comes back at them is a demand for attention. Here's a question, entertain me. They shut down because there's so much of that going on. And so men, Guys, I really want you to understand that women who are looking for something deep need a deeper conversation. And you also need to understand that while you may use about five to 7,000 words a day, women use about 20,000 words a day. So if you're not hiking up the number of words that you're using and your responses to them, if they write you something, and then your response back is to just kind of ignore what it is that they said, maybe not even really answer their questions, but then send them a message back going, what's your favorite place to go eat at? What is your biggest adventure that you've done? If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? They're getting this message back going, I feel ignored because I wrote something this long and I got this back. I feel like I'm gonna be used because I'm trying to establish some kind of a connection and all you're doing is saying, entertain me. And they're not in for that and so they shut down. <clears throat> uh, so Eudic says, how to approach an unknown girl who you think is beautiful and you kind of feel she's the one you want. You might not look as good as she is, but you want her. Here's the key to that, my friend. You need to add value to her life. Um, so if she is attractive, hey, makeup darling. Um, hello, hello, good to see you. So, you know, listen, ladies, I actually encourage you to seek a partner who is less attractive than you because there's some science behind this. When a man perceives his partner to be more attractive than him, he is happier in the relationship. And in his mind, he's like, why would I even go look anywhere else? I have something amazing. I already have an attractive partner. And mother nature also designed males to be the seed planters, right? So you wanna think about fertility cycles. So female fertility turns off for a set period every month because she wants you to have a good selection process. She doesn't want to rush you into a relationship because when you make a baby inside of you, in caveman days, that was a dangerous thing. In essence, you needed to have a good, strong male beside you to do the three Ps, protect, profess, and provide. And so she made women supposedly to be good selectors. Ladies, don't forget that kiss tells you you know everything you need to know already, even if you don't. Male fertility cycle is on 24 seven. So they're the seed planters, they're eager to go. So ladies, if you choose a partner who is slightly less attractive than you, then his good to go is all about you because he's like, why would I look anywhere else? Because look what I have. But if a male partner, and guys, this is always generalities, of course there's always exceptions to the rule. But a male partner, who is generally more attractive than his female partner, that seed planting instinct that mother nature put into him, which is all about finding the strongest gene code. And the way that we subconsciously recognize a strong G code is through the formation of our faces, symmetry. If your face is symmetrical, your gene code is symmetrical and a symmetrical code in mother nature is a strong code. So that's how we subconsciously recognize strong G codes is through attractiveness in someone's face. And so 
attractive males are really designed by mother nature to want to procreate to want to go plant those seeds because mother nature wants every species to be built as strongly as possible so it can survive and adapt that is just a natural fact of nature so listen don't worry if you are less attractive than this woman what you need to tell yourself is how can I give her value? What can I do for her? So get to know her, find out what she needs, find out if she's, I'm drawing a blank right now, but just, just really get to know her, right? Like my husband, the second time he saw me, cause the first time was the bells going off in his head. So the second time he saw me, he said, can I take you out to dinner? I said, no, I'm not available. And he went, that's okay. I'm going to hang around. I'm going to find out what she needs. And when she asks me for something, I'm going to say yes. And he did that. And he brought value to my life. He helped me out. And because he was around and creating value, I really got to know him and I got to see the human being he is. And I fell in love with him. So really become her friend, bring value to her life give her an opportunity to fall in love with you. Uh, Raven says, if you didn't mention on your profile that you have a child, when is the right time to mention first date? Absolutely first date. There's a lot of things that you should talk about on your first date. Uh, yes, you know, what? what is going on in your life? That is really important. Are you still living with your ex? That is something you should disclose on your first date. Sometimes people, you know, break up, but the financial situation means that they can't quite split right away. Um, but you're done with the relationship and so you're out there dating. Disclose that. Don't hide things from people because what I say is you want to start off on the same tone that you want the relationship to continue on. And that should be open and honest about who you are and what you want and what you're looking for. Um, so yes, disclose what is in your life. Disclose what your intent is. I'm looking for a relationship. I'm done my playtime. What about you? And if you think there's all this chemistry on that first date, also disclose that you're going to do a no kissing for three months rule so that you can set that date and let them know when you're ready for that first kiss. Um, <clears throat> so you dig says, imagine you're in a cafeteria. You kind of find this very attractive girl, one amongst many, but she's unknown to me. How shall I bring value to her? Here's the key. You have to come up and start a conversation. You have to go up to her and say, hey, I just wanted to let you know and then give her a compliment, make her laugh. Males, it doesn't matter what you look like. If you are the funniest, brightest, most interesting person, then she will be interested in you. Hey, Corey, hello, hello. Uh, so guys, bring those questions. I love, love, love these questions. <clears throat> Listen, you cannot be afraid of approaching people. I mean, I know you're going to be afraid. I know you're going to be nervous, but there's my hit and run uh, flirting role, which is basically going up to somebody, state the obvious. Oh, by the way, if you're a female, touch them. If you're a male, don't touch yet because, you know, it definitely rules certainly are different between genders. We are not alike. We're puzzle pieces, guys. We're not exactly similar. So, you know, advice that I would give to a male isn't always the same advice I give to a female. But if you're a female approaching somebody, definitely reach out and touch because your touch communicates much more than anything. And, and for both of you, go up to the person and break the ice by stating the obvious. What is the reason why you're there? What brought you over? What, what, is, what is fun about them? What's interesting about them? What really caught your eye? And state that, that obvious. You know, in a cafeteria filled with people, go up to them and go, I don't know if you know this, but you are the most attractive person in this cafeteria and bring a smile to their face. Hello from Mexico. Wow, this is interesting. Um, <clears throat> so makeup says, I find if the man is better looking than the girl, uh, they belittle and act all cocky. No, that would be a guy. If somebody is belittling and acting cocky, this is a guy. This is a selfish short-term thinker, and they got their dating advice from a 
pickup artist. Now, a pickup artist will basically advise a male to unbalance a female. So think about this really visually. If you're unbalanced, are you gonna reach out and grab something to get your balance back? What they want you to do is become unbalanced so you reach out and grab them and get your balance back. So belittling somebody is a pickup artist tactic. Beware the person who does that because they are literally trying to make you feel insecure so that you reach out and take them for a little bit of security. Not cool, shut that down, walk away, go, mm -mm, I'm too smart for this, sorry, bye-bye. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so any anybody who does that, please, please just immediately walk away, say goodbye, let them know that will not work with you. Uh, yeah, so guys touching girls, so, so Curry says, um, you know, like, like a, I don't want a male to touch me without permission. Like that's, you know, it just should not happen. Um, I just, I don't want you to take, I want you to give and then wait for permission. Let me give you what I want to give you. So males don't just reach out and, and touch women, but Women, if you are interested in male, your touch will communicate that better than your words ever can. Um, you did says, done, gonna try this. Uh, thing is, Indian girls are not that easy. Of course not, darling, and nor should they be. Nor should any girl be that easy. Uh, just really, women, you need to be more selective. You need to have a time and space boundary so that you can discern who the person is in front of you before you choose them as a partner. Uh, <laughs> makeup on my hair, amazing. Mwah! Love you for that. God, I love you guys. Like seriously, I will show up for you. Guys, I, I, will, I will drag my ass out of the grave to show up for you because I love you so much. I just, I love giving you, again, it's, it's this whole notion, give before you receive because I give you what is inside of me. I give you this wisdom. I give you this research. I give you this experience. And you end up giving me back so, so much. And I love you for it. Love, love, love you for it. Um, so what else, what else can we have? What else? Here's, let me see. Let me think of another tip now, since we don't have a question right now. Um, how to not get ghosted when you are online dating. Um, now, first of all, sometimes you might not be ghosted. I have worked with people who, you know, they send out a message, they get a reply back, they send a message back to that person, they wait two days and then they delete. They delete because they're like, oh, that person rejected me, so obviously they're not into me and I'm just gonna keep going. Guys, please, patience. Use some patience because you don't know what is happening in that person's life. You don't know if they are crazy busy from the moment they got up until the moment, hey Joe, from the moment they got up until the moment they went to bed, you don't know if they got in an accident that day. You don't know if a family member got in an accident that day. You just don't know what's going on. And so don't assume that just because somebody doesn't reply to you right away, that they have rejected you. And in fact, one of my clients that um, I was working with this past week, <clears throat> got, got like sweet, sweet, sweet man. And I have him reaching out to a lot of women, like at least 10, 15 women on a daily basis online and, and sending them like, you know, as, as my rule is, you read the profile, you write something that relates to what they put in their profile so that they understand that you're not just looking at faces looking for somebody to sleep with you are reading their profile because you're looking for somebody to get in a relationship with and so he's been doing this and he got four replies back and so he replied to these four women and they all ghosted him why because he came back with a demand for attention he was not giving before looking to get something back and so I understand why they ghosted because potentially they were like, uh, you know what, this is like, I'm not here to entertain. I'm here to get to know somebody. And I asked a question and it was ignored. I gave him the script for those four women to re-engage the conversation. And one of them, so two out of the four wrote back and one of them said, 
oh my god I didn't realize that I did not press send on this last message maybe that was true so be patient give it some time and then re-engage but in a more engaging way give read into what it is that they say about themselves answer the question that maybe you didn't answer or just you know say as I had my client do say hey I hope you're staying warm and cozy and then give a little bit of information about their lives uh, <clears throat> so Raven says does age matter mm -mm. I don't feel my age but I'm attracting 10 plus younger males listen age is but a number I worked with a client this week she was 33 the guy she was dating was 20 years old I could not believe how mature how dedicated how focused he is I mean the guy is 20 and he's like I'm done with the party scene because I'm going to university to be a doctor and I want to be fully plugged into my studies so age really does not matter what matters is mindset most importantly I've dated younger guys I've dated older guys that were like younger guys like I remember when I was 20 I dated a guy who was 30 I broke up with him because he was too immature for me so age makes no difference whatsoever what matters is mindset are they a selfish short-term thinker or are they a generous long-term thinker and then compatibility are they on the same page as you are in terms of life goals what you're looking for do they also want to start a family do they also want to buy a house are they also goal oriented or whatever it is that you are do they also want to travel the world like you do those are the important things so if you are compatible in mindset and you are compatible in life goals and values what the fuck is age age is nothing do not worry about age whatsoever and um, by the way uh later on when i was in my 20s still dating older men uh <clears throat> i dated some much older men and i it was just it was amazing i loved it love 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 uh, my first husband by the way was four years younger than I was my current husband we are actually literally just months apart it doesn't matter what the age is you can love somebody you can be compatible with them you can make it work as long as they're willing to make it work with you as long as you're compatible that's all that counts and if anybody doesn't like that you're not on the same level when it comes to age ask them where that comes from because that's a judgment on their part that's based on an intangible factor that doesn't have anything to do with who a person is inside and I'm not about judging a book by its cover guys come on like seriously I wrote the book no more assholes and I sat in a bookstore one of my first book signings and I had I had a dad come up by the way can you tell me do you read this backwards or not I keep asking this but I'm not sure it looks backwards to me I had a dad come up take a picture of my book cover and he said I am offended by this book and I said you are literally judging a book by its cover because I know what's in here I know why men love what I say because I see them and I encourage women to recognize them oh it is backwards oh well so it's called no more assholes your seven step guide to saying goodbye to guys and finding the real man that you're looking for and guys are what I call selfish short-term thinkers men is what I call generous long-term thinkers and I state there is nothing wrong with being in a short-term thinking frame of mind I have been there when I was 21 I had just gone out of three years of an abusive relationship and the last thing I wanted to do was rush into the next relationship before I took some time for myself and so I made a rule for myself that I was gonna go out I was gonna have fun I was gonna have fun but my one rule was no intercourse I was gonna and listen and this is exactly what I did I went to bars I picked up guys I made out with guys I said do you want to come home only one rule no intercourse you can't put it in we can play we can have fun let me tell you the handcuffs came out but you cannot put it in and only one guy turned me down that full year but I was in girl mode I was in selfish short-term thinking mode I did not want a relationship I wanted here today have some fun 
gone tomorrow, get out of my life, that's it. I did not want to settle down with anybody because I spent so much time being locked into relationships with the wrong people. There's nothing wrong with just wanting to have fun. But when you want a relationship, you're looking for somebody to lean into, to dedicate yourself to, to be of service to. Like I am a service to my husband, my husband is of service to me, and that is a generous long-term thinking state. And if you fall for somebody who is just having fun, this is when you say, oh my God, they're such an asshole. They're not giving me what I want. They're not giving me what I need. What you want to need is a dedicated long-term relationship. They're not there, just like I wasn't there when I was 21. And it's okay for somebody to not be there. What is not okay is to go fetch somebody in that mindset and try to drag them into where you are. You're not compatible. It's not going to work. You need to find the right mindset. I got some more comments here. <clears throat> yes, makeup. Go buy this book. Absolutely. You can get this on Amazon. Makeup says, I'm going to buy this book. Love you. You can buy it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Indigo. You can walk into a bookstore and say, hey, I want to order this book, No More Assholes by Chantal Hyde. They will order it in for you. I get bookstores all over the place all the time who order in my books to put on their shelves or they special order it for customers. You can walk into a chapters bookstore and say, hey, I want to order this book. They will order the paperback for you. By the way, if you like e-reader, just go download the e-reader anywhere where you buy books online. I have made this so accessible and so easy to find. You can literally get it anywhere. Guys, I'm telling you, you can even find it on eBay. So go get this. This is a game changer. I get messages all the time. Um, if you check my Instagram feed, like I just posted another comment by somebody who said, I read this book. It's a game changer for me. It's changed my mind. It's changed how I'm approaching things. Um, Yudik says, it's the connection between two souls that matter. 100%, my friend. It should be always like two naked souls, mm, like me and my husband. Mm, me and my husband, guys, I'm so in love. We've been together for 14 years. I am so in love. Like, you can be in a relationship and love each other, and you can be in a relationship and be in love. And I am still infatuated with this man to this day. And by the way, we haven't had a fight in five years. I keep bragging about that because frankly, I think it's a great bragging point. My book, Fix That Shit, which is this one right here, backwards again. Uh, so Fix That Shit, A Couple's Guide to Getting Past the Sticky Stuff. Um, this is once you get in a relationship, well, first of all, get through the insecurity phase. Uh, after the first kiss, how to make your first year uh, ridiculously awesome is going to get you through the insecurity phase, which happens shortly after you commit to somebody. So you have the courtship phase. And then once you've gone through the courtship phase, you've invested all this emotion. You're like, oh, I don't want to lose this person. We tend to like kind of go a little bit crazy. So this book after the first gets you through that, but then you really fall into each other and the baggage starts coming up. So fix that shit. Oh my God. Did we ever have baggage? Like my husband and I, we fought steady for 10 years. I finally learned how to fix that shit. I was fixing that shit while I was writing fix that shit, guys. Holy cow. But we haven't had a fight in five years. And I am like this morning looking at my husband going, uh -huh, <laughs> because he is just like love does that. By the way, um, this imbalance of attraction that I talked about earlier, finding a partner that's less attractive than you doesn't mean they stay in your in your vision, in your mind, less attractive than you. When you fall in love with somebody, your vision changes and they become the sexiest person, the most attractive person. Like my husband, he's he's no Robert Downey Jr. or whoever. I don't know. I got a crush on Robert Downey Jr. Listen, he's not quote unquote the most attractive man in the world, but he definitely is the most attractive man in the world. There is no man more attractive than my husband. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so yes. So in a nutshell, you dick again. Age is just a number. Relationship is just a tag at the end of the connection. It's the connection that matters. Yes, my friend. Uh, Carissa says, Chantal, when I was online dating, I had tons of guys approaching me who were in their 20s. I'm in my 50s. I couldn't take them seriously. No, my love. Of course not. And chances are they were just out there fishing to see who they could have sex with. Um, 
there will be, of course, the odd person in their 20s who is definitely looking for a relationship. Um, and frankly, if you're in your 50s and there is somebody who is looking for a relationship and you don't have a hang up about numbers, I give you permission, my love. Pursue that because that could be a wonderful soulmate connection. It could be the one you're looking for who will make all your dreams come true, who is dedicated and responsible and steady as hell and who just wants to love you and be of service to you each and every day, just like my husband and I are to each other. Oh, hello, Sarah. Hello, Abus. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Kathy, hello. Nice to see you. As always, you guys, you have any questions, you have any comments, please dish them on me because I love answering you. I love helping you, love giving you some insight, love opening some doors for you maybe, love getting your feedback. Uh, we had a viewer not too long ago, she was popping up every week. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and we, first of all, we helped her change her mindset because you know she's going to school, had three jobs, raising a kid, and she was saying, I'm too busy today, what do I do? And I said, honey bunny, the first thing you do is you change your mindset from I'm too busy to date to I am perfect for a great man who is himself very busy because busy people understand busy people. So don't say you're too busy today. Just know that you're perfect for the one who's thinking I need somebody who's busy so that they don't feel like I don't have time for them. And guess what? She ended up dating somebody who was in her class and who's been putting up Christmas lights for her, who's been helping her out. Uh, he even offered to pay for her school, which it was way too early and she said so and I agreed, but I did let her know that she should tell him, it's too early for you to be so generous with me. I can't accept this gift right now, but I want to assure you that if you and I actually get into a committed relationship, I will let you help me out in any way you want to because that's what a good man is. And by the way, guys, here's a little mind trick. When you let somebody do something for you, they like you more. Why? Ah, oh, what a great question. I love that question. Because we are herd animals by nature. We fundamentally understand on a subconscious level that there is security in numbers. So again, think back to caveman days when we needed to really work together in order to survive. So we had tribes, right? Now here's the thing with a tribe. You understood that if you gave something to someone, it was because you wanted to help ensure their survival. Why would you want to ensure their survival? Because they were a part of your tribe. Why are they a part of your tribe? Because they're someone that you care about. So when somebody wants to do something for you, as long as it's not like inappropriately big, for the amount of time that you've been together, like for instance, you've only been together for one or two weeks and they want to pay something big for you. I do agree that it's too early for that. But otherwise, even if you don't need it, ladies pay attention. Even if you don't need it, say yes, thank you. I appreciate this. You are such a good man. This is your script. Yes, thank you, I appreciate you. You're such a good man. The reason why they're doing this is because they want you to recognize them for the good men that they are. So let them know that you do. <clears throat> okay, guys, uh, I am going to sign off for today. Oh, sorry, we've got one more. How do you feel about poly relationships? Okay, here is my philosophy about relationships and what happens within a relationship. Are you ready? Nothing without permission. If you want to go outside of the relationship, if you want to have an open relationship, you have a discussion with your partner. You establish if you are both okay with this. You come up with rules and guidelines and you get permission for what it is that you want to do. If your partner is willing to give you permission, it's all good because you're not doing anything without consent. Hello, Shu. Um, Listen, it is, it is all about being able to trust each other. So if you're doing something behind your partner's back, then you will break that trust bond because they're gonna start wondering once they find out, because listen, people ultimately do find out. I get this stuff all the time. Don't do anything without permission. Make sure that you are clear and open about what it is that you want. So polyamorous, there's nothing wrong with that 
as long as you're with a partner who feels like there's nothing wrong with that. If you want a polyamorous relationship and you have a discussion with your partner and they say, I'm not comfortable with that, now you understand that you have an incompatibility and you need to go seek what you want in another relationship. If you are a polyamorous person, you need a poly okay partner. Um, so be sure that you're on the same page. I'm completely fine with that. I, again, it, anything with permission, whatever it is that you want, whatever it is you negotiate between the two of you, as long as both of you are consenting to what is happening within the relationship, who might have a problem with that? So, <clears throat> okay, I don't see any more questions. Um, guys, remember, I will be back here on Monday and have another hot topic. Come find me at noon. Come bring me whatever's on your mind. Let me help you out. Thank you. Yes, yes, I will. I will, I will, I will. I love you guys so much. Love, I love your love. I love you. I love your evolution. And I love helping you find love because I love your stories. I'm going to give, give, give because, listen, you guys give me back so much. And I love it. You light me up. Do you see this face? You light me up. And I love you tons. So, if you're on Facebook, by the way, you can catch me again tomorrow night at 8 p.m. I'll be on Facebook Live at Canada's, Canada's Dating Coach. And if not, come catch me again here Monday at noon. I love you guys. <laughs>